Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jadley, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast and iHeartRadio Best Kids and Family Podcast Award nominee. We're coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We're so delighted that you're joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Thank you, thank you, thank you for subscribing to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Courtney Dunlap. She is here to celebrate forgiveness, a coloring journal supporting your journey to freedom. Hey, Courtney, how are you? Hey, I'm well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. I'm really excited to have you on, too. I'm really, I'm, I was really intrigued by your coloring journal. First, why don't we just start by telling us, I, I know what a coloring book is. I'm not quite sure I know what a coloring journal is. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> it's literally a coloring journal, a journal you can color through. I know that in the more recent years, adult coloring books have come to be the rage, and that's something that people really enjoy. They find it relaxing. They find it therapeutic. You know, it brings out your inner child and all that. Um, a coloring journal marries the two ideas because then you have people who like to journal you know people like guided journals and journals that make you stop think reflect take you through different um, points to note and so that's what this is this merges the two and so I actually just published it um, in July it was a little birthday present to myself every year I get myself a birthday gift and this year I said go big or go home let's publish a book <laughs> so I decided to publish my third book and that's this coloring journal that's wonderful I'm I'm really curious I'm, I'm somebody I've been journaling most of my life uh, there have been a couple of versions of it I journaled in high school as a um, as an assignment for a couple of years and then I picked it up again as a social worker, and then when I married my beautiful wife, I began the third version of the journal, which is still going strong, and I think I'm up to page 11,000 or something like that. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, I, yeah, unfortunately, it's not a lot of very interesting things, but it, it is a very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there are very, there, there are oftentimes, um, situations where I was very frustrated or very angry and I decided that I would write about it in my journal before I would address anybody about it. And yeah. it's amazing how after you write a little bit and reflect mm -hmm. on things, things don't seem quite as catastrophic mm -hmm. as they did 15 minutes earlier. Absolutely. You are correct, sir. <laughs> you win a prize. Yeah, you're right. I, I love to journal. Even when I was a little girl, I had a little journal this is dating me a bit, but you know, every girl had this little diary that had a teeny little heart shaped silver locket that had that teeny tiny little key. Mm -hmm. And in reality, all the keys were shaped the same. So who are you really keeping out of that diary? <laughs> but for my, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, this is my top secret property. No one's going to look at this. And I carried that through. And you know, as I got older, I got more and more journals and I love to journal. It's, it's, Exactly what you just described is exactly that. I find that when I'm going through difficult times or stressed or frustrated or disappointed or whatever, you know, I just get it out. I, I, you know, I'm a Christian. And so in my journals, oftentimes I write out prayers and yeah, sometimes if I'm upset with someone, I will kind of almost even role play and write out what I want to say to the person and just kind of help me gather my thoughts. So it's really useful. Yeah. And so I'm guessing the, your Christian faith was uh, sort of inspiration for the theme of, of this book. Absolutely. It runs all through it, really. Um, for me, forgiveness, and part of the title, it's a journey, right? Um, for me, forgiveness is a journey. You know, the reality is some people, you hear that adage of um, forgive and forget, right? The honest truth is no, no, no. <laughs> Uh, some people even say, fool me once, fool me twice, you know. And the reality is, forgiving people when they hurt us, you know, 
that cuts deep, you know. Um, sure, if you get like an injury, you stub your toe, you feel that pain and it's sharp and you're like, oh, you're grabbing it, but that subsides. But, you know, wounds to your heart, um, pains, betrayals, um, disappointments, those things can kind of stick with you for a while. And so my hope with this journal is to really carry people and support them through the journey because this journal is not going to solve your issues. It's not, I'm not setting out to, you know, once you finish it, that's our stamp of approval. You have now forgiven the person. You get a, a brownie. No, the reality is it comes in waves. Um, there's layers to it. And as a Christian, I ultimately feel and truly believe that the Bible teaches that true forgiveness first starts with God through a relationship with him, through Jesus Christ, um, you know, uh, <laughs> and from the forgiveness that we receive, we're able to also see people as humans and see that we make mistakes and we need to extend forgiveness the same way we've received forgiveness. So that's part of the journey that it takes people through. And the actual um, ending of the journal um, ends on hope. Because I recognize that, sure, this might have been a nice experience. I got to color some beautiful pages. I got to reflect and journal and write things out, get out my emotions. But they might end it still feeling a little unresolved. And so that's okay. I don't want people to think that it all has to be nice and tidy and with a bow. But there's hope. Even if you haven't come to the quote-unquote end of your forgiveness journal journey, even if you don't fully feel free and like you can fully release the person who's hurt you, there's still hope that that can be possible in the future. I, I love what you're saying. I think it's so very, very important. And I, I, I thank you for sharing the, the inspiration for that and, and your faith because I think it's important. And I think that anybody listening, whatever faith they are, um, can, can learn from that and, and grow from that. That forgiveness, that ability to look at other people and realize that they're human and that they're going to make mistakes and also recognize the fact that I'm human and I'm making mistakes. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it, I think if we had more of that these days, yeah. we wouldn't be as polarized as we are here in this nation. I absolutely agree with you because, you know... The person, whatever side you find yourself on, we still are living a life, right? Mm -hmm. We still may have children. We still may have stressors. We all still have bills. <laughs> you know, we still have people in our lives who may be sick. We have um, work stressors. And so when we can, like you said, see like, okay, you're a human. We may not agree on a lot of things, but I can agree on the fact that you are living a life and you're going through things. I think that helps us each be able to put our weapons down and even if anything be willing to understand where someone is coming from versus jumping the gun and be on the defense and on the attack and ready to go and and it's like you know what <laughs> we're all trying our best here <laughs> well i think that's right and and you made a really good point um that a lot of times it seems you know we 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 like to think of ourselves as enlightened and yes, I can have a conversation with somebody that I disagree with, but a lot of times we're not actually having a conversation, even if not, we're not yelling at the person and bickering back, you know, back and forth. A lot of times we're not hearing what the person is saying. We're, we have our defenses up and we're just waiting for our turn to talk. Because as soon as Absolutely. my turn to talk, I have something to say to you, and I am going to put yeah. you down. <laughs> and and we really miss out on an opportunity to to hear where the other person is coming from. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, yeah, like you just said, sometimes we're waiting, we're listening for our rebuttal. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're listening for our chance to, okay, now it's my turn to mm -hmm. speak. Uh, my background, actually, I went to college for psychology from undergrad, and then my graduate was a master's in Christian counseling. And I really appreciate the program that I was in because it was like on the job training. We actually, uh, the people who were students in the program, we were like counseling one another and, and practicing on each other and having to learn how to 
listen to hear what was being said behind the words. You know, we were listening for the emotions because mm -hmm. your words may be saying one thing, but the emotion behind those words, the tonalities, the emphasis, the things that are really underneath the surface, that's what, as a trained counselor, that's what people need to really listen for. So not to say you have to be a trained counselor or anything to interact with people, but the reality is, trust me, with plenty of people you interact with, if you have an encounter with a store clerk, and let's say they might be a little sharp with you, you know, with their response. Typically, I can speak for myself. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I might be tempted to get snarky back. But it's like if I can stop for a minute and recognize, who knows, maybe they have something going on at home that's causing that response. You know, let me be a little more gentle to them. Let me maybe say, hey, how's your day going versus let me speak to your manager. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think it's also really important because we're talking to so many parents here on the podcast, that skill of not only listening to the words, but listening to the emotion behind mm -hmm. it, Absolutely. because so many of our kids mm -hmm. um, aren't able to express their feelings. They, they're not understanding the, the emotion that they're feeling. So it's a lot of time it's coming out as anger. And mm -hmm. as parents, a lot of times our attitude is, how dare you express anger yes. to me? I'm your parent. How you know who I am? Yeah, you, well, oh. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, if we take the time to sit down and go, okay, yeah, my son's really making me angry right, right now. And I really feel like saying, do you know who I am? But mm. maybe <laughs> I should listen a little bit closer and see if I can, mm -hmm. if I can hear the pain that's, that's causing mm -hmm. this. Absolutely. I agree. My husband and I, we have four children ranging in ages from three to 12. Oh, Lord. So, oh, Lord. Oh. And, and, and three of those children are girls. So, and we've got some preteen things going on in the hormones. And, and my three-year-old, she's enough for everyone. <laughs> and so I absolutely have to listen for the emotion and hear beyond the words. I may let, like the presentation of their words, um, but there are plenty of times as a parent, if I'm cued in, because granted, there are times where I'm like, listen here, you just need to do what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But other times, I'm like, no, let me slow myself down. It, it takes humility, really, mm -hmm. you know, to, to acknowledge like, okay, there may be more going on. Let me slow up a little bit. Let me check in and see what's really going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of, I'm not sure if I shared this on the podcast. If I had, it's been a while. But one of the, the, the best moments uh, in my life as a parent was uh, in dealing with um, some of my, f my son's middle school frustrations. And there were plenty of them. Middle school was really, really hard for him. And at one point, I just sat down, and I think he mentioned, well, you did this, and you did that. And I just sat down. I goes, uh, tomorrow night, we're going to stop right now. And you're going to go to your room, and you're going to think, and you're going to make a list of everything bad that I've done, everything I mistreated you every time that I treated your sister differently. Make a list. We're going to talk about it tomorrow night. If we have to go to 3 o'clock in the morning, we'll go to 3 o'clock in the morning. But we're going to deal, deal with all of it. Mm. and 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 you're going to be in charge and so i just want to hear you so wow. tomorrow night's your time and it really made a difference because mm -hmm. it was like hey i'm going to hear you i'm going to acknowledge you we're going to deal with this and then we're going to put it away and then wow. you're not going to bring these these things back up um wow. you know i wish i could tell you that it, you know it was a stroke of genius and uh, <laughs> i knew instinctually and the reality is it's like I'm got I got to do something different or I'm going to kill this kid. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's like that, you know, parenthood is about innovation, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you can say one thing about it, it is definitely about that. But I feel like I don't know how old your child is, your son is now, but I'm sure that left an impact. You know, we take those moments to interact with our children and it sounds weird to say but if we interact with them as though they are people because many times kids um can be overlooked mm -hmm. society is like oh you know quiet over there go over there and play be, be seen and not heard that type of ideal even though it seems like that's changing a little bit more 
But when we take those moments to acknowledge their dignity Mm -hmm. and acknowledge their personhood and you know what, you are a full human being with the whole gamut of emotions. Now you may have some immaturity there with the way you process and see the world and I need to help shape and guide you. But when you acknowledge like you are sobbing your eyes out right now because you squished your favorite bug. And in my mind, I'm like, I don't got time for this. Come on, we need to get in the car, put your shoes on, let's go. (laughs) But in that moment, that's like a huge deal to them. And it's like if we can slow ourselves down and acknowledge, I know you feel disappointed. Um, But then even help guide them along because, like, let's not just stop at disappointment because I know for me sometimes with my kids, I have to encourage them that they're upset or disappointed. They'll take it out on their siblings, Mm -hmm. right? And I'm like, I know, and I this I probably sound like a broken record to my kids. I'm like, I know you're upset, and that's okay to be upset. However, it's not okay to take that out on your sibling. It's not okay to now, just because you're mad, it's not okay to now ruin their day mm-hmm. and be mean to them. So it's like teaching them how to still cope and problem solve and learn how to push through difficulty. Because that, honestly, is a skill that you need as an adult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I truly believe that parenting is training and discipleship and teaching. That's really my approach to parenting my children in motherhood is discipleship. Discipleship simply means training. Um, and it's not training like a dog, like jump, mm-hmm. bark, mm-hmm. speak, sit. It's not that, but it's training them how to learn how to control their emotions. It's not okay to blow up on people. It's not okay to say crazy, mean things to people just because you're angry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's teaching them how to be kind and, and, and loving. And, and then there's other times, like, it's okay to cry about this. Because sometimes it's like the idea of, man up, you're not allowed to cry. You know, if, if you have a son, like, men don't cry. No, that's not true. Men cry. Mm-hmm. And that's healthy. Mm-hmm. Now, with our kids, <laughs> sometimes we have to say, there's good things to cry about. <laughs> and there's some other things that aren't so good to cry about. So it's even helping them learn how to gauge <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. things in that way. Yeah. And and, and I, I hope we all remember that as parents, we are, even when they're 12 and 13 and they're going into those teenage years and they're dealing with the home, hormones and you're thinking, you are the least favorite person in in their lives. The reality is that as parents, we are the most important people in our mm-hmm. kids' lives. And when we show them respect, when we acknowledge their personhood, their dignity, mm-hmm. that yeah. means the world to them. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. You know, that idea of dignity, that kind of is important to you because I know that you also – um, have written a book called The Rumble Hunters, and Yay! you are, you know, the, the idea that the kids, especially kids of color, are able to see themselves as heroes mm-hmm. in books, that's really important for you. Tell us a little bit more about that, please. Absolutely. The Rumble Hunters is, like, my favorite. I know I wrote it, but it's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun book. Um, I wrote it, just like you're saying, with that in mind. Um, so many statistics. I actually was reading an article the other day, just the idea that so many stories um, really don't reflect people of color. Thankfully, that's starting, you know, people are definitely adding to those drops in the bucket, and we need more of it, you know. There's room. (laughs) Come on, if you have a story to share, yes, there's room. But the idea that um, many stories that show black and brown characters Um, speak from the sad and dark history in our country, particularly with slavery, um, the atrocities that were done to um, Africans and, um, you know, the stories of brutality and how people were able to persevere, stories of, you know, um, how people were able to overcome segregation, Jim Crow, and and just the idea of perseverance within the African-American fabric of our community. And those stories are important. They're rich. They need to be told. But my reality, as I see, as I'm raising my black and brown children, I want them to see that we're bigger than that. You know, our story started before 1619, before the first Africans were stolen. There's dignity to our people. um, And so we deserve to be heroes, too. Many stories will have heroes, but they don't look like us. So when I wrote The Rumble Hunters, I wanted black and brown kids to see I can be a hero. I can solve a problem. I can go on an adventure. I can have fun. (laughs) 
And it doesn't have to make mention of those things, which, again, there's room for those stories, but we need more stories that tell the broader experience. So that was the heart behind writing The Rumble Hunters. Yeah. What's the reaction been to The Rumble Hunters? It's been amazing. People have been just, it's blown me away. Um, publishing that book, I self-published all my books, and that was a four-year process for that book. And I'll never forget the first week when it went on sale and I started, you know, getting some email notifications. Oh, someone's bought your book. I just started crying and to my husband. I'm like, people are buying my book. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, you know, and I published it February 2020. And to this day, I still feel that level of pride and joy, the fact that people want to hear this story. I will have... People I don't even know will tag me on posts and they're like, yeah, we're reading The Rumble Hunters again. Or, you know, just the overwhelming response of people who, even other authors, you know, it's just been amazing. Uh, my book has been able to really travel the world. It's in libraries in South Korea, which is like, what? Uh, children in Ghana, um, children in India, children, uh, a friend of mine, her sister in Brazil was learning English through reading the Rumble Hunters, which awesome. I was like, that is so cool. So it's just been just such a fun experience. I'm, I'm just, I'm overwhelmed with joy about the reception of it. Well, that's, that's wonderful. I, I love that. How does it feel? Um, you, you were sharing some of this, but did you ever think that, you know, one day you'd be writing these books affecting people's lives people you you'll never meet and people on the other side of the world no idea <laughs> if you would have told me this five years ago I'd like oh stop it <laughs> my background like I said like when I graduated I asked my husband I was so busy I'm gonna have a counseling practice in my own office and that was you know I was working in my field when I was pregnant with my third child and you know, the idea of writing books was not even on my radar at all. So it's just like crazy to see this unfold. And it's it's humbling. And I'm just so grateful. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't know if anybody's mentioned this to you. You, you were mentioning that you were in, you, know, you were counseling folks a, a, when you were pregnant with your, with your third child. The reality is that you're still counseling people, but in a different way. Yeah, I could see that. Absolutely. Yeah. I can totally see that. <laughs> I feel like I use my degree every day with my kids. <laughs> well, I, and and uh, I have some funny stories about that, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, um, Courtney, tell everybody where they can go to find out more about you and your great books. Absolutely. You can follow me on social media. I'm very active on Instagram as of late. Uh, and a little advice to anybody who's an aspiring author, make sure you make your Instagram handle less complicated than what I made mine. So <laughs> don't do like me. Learn from my mistake. My handle, of course I can change it, but at this point it is what it is. My handle is Courtney underscore B underscore Dunlap. <laughs> and my website is www.courtneybdunlap.com. And my books are available anywhere books are sold online. They are available through Amazon, uh, barnesandnoble.com, target.com, walmart.com. It's awesome. exciting. Awesome. Yeah. We've had a wonderful, wonderful time speaking to the author of Forgiveness, a coloring journal supporting your journey to freedom and so much more. Hey, Courtney, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. This was so fun. I appreciate it. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. I'm really excited about our next episode. Our guests would be Greg and Beth Langston. They're here to celebrate the college flight plan. This is a way that you can sit down and start talking with your teenagers about college, helping them find out what their strengths are, what their passions are, so that they can make a great decision about college. Don't, this, is, this is a really important conversation. You don't want to miss it. That's the next episode of the podcast. Hey, if you are the author of a fantastic children's book, you may be frustrated at how difficult it is 
to let the world know about your book. You know, there are literally thousands of books published every single month. Not not every single year. Every single month, there are thousands of books published. And if you are an independent publisher, self-published, being published by a, a, a tiny publishing house, getting noticed can be really, really difficult. We have a program that has helped a whole lot of authors. It's called our Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read Program. And if your book is deemed worthy of four or five out of five stars by our panel of teachers, parents, and kids, it becomes a certified great read. And with that status come some really powerful promotional tools that can let parents know that your book is worthy of their consideration. To learn more, please go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click in the Authors Click Here button at the top of the page and scroll on down to Certified Great Reads. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, I want to start by thanking our guest, Courtney B. Dunlop. Please be sure to check out Forgiveness, a coloring journal supporting your journey to freedom. I also want to thank my team, Alejandro Doherty, Fatima Khan. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to join together to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast.